this here is us exploring the end dimension and getting an elytra from the ship. But what if I told you that the whole end was fake, including the ship we just explored? In our last episode we made a hundred thousand TNT blocks. And today you will see us use those to dig a massive hole and turn it into a fake end dimension that looks exactly like the real one. You might be asking why don't we use TNT tubers like we have used for all of our previous perimeters. That's the problem, we have never tried digging without TNT tubers. So the rule for this project is no TNT dupers. One of the ways you can use TNT is to place the ground full of it and hope for the best. But the results are so unpredictable, so this is not what we're going to use. Introducing the TNT greed. With this you can always drop the TNT in the same place and it gives you an even result. And this is what we are going to build, but almost a hundred times bigger. We have an item list for the TNT grid, and only two things are missing in our storage room. 6000 redstone dust and 600 dispensers. For the redstone dust I just need to survive a couple of hours in the raid farm without dying. It's been a problem in the past, but we'll see. And I survived, which means I have shulker boxes of redstone dust waiting. That was easy. But what's not easy are the dispensers. Again, in our last episode of making the massive creeper farm, we had to craft almost the same amount, and it was not fun. So, our digging is gonna happen right here and the shape of the hole will be a big circle. Let me fire up the drone so you can see better. The circle area here is what we are aiming to dig down. And our first step is to use our shovels to get the ground flattened out in a circular shape. Now we need to dig even further, but only the outside row of the circle. Then fill those with water, so the TNT can't destroy our beautiful walls. We found a nice surprise along the way. This huge water area that all has to be drained. Otherwise the TNT we plan on dropping here won't destroy anything. It took us three and a half hours, but our border digging is done. This is the kind of tunnel we have now, more than 80 blocks deep and going all the way around. The next step is filling this with water. This water will hopefully help us keep the walls clean and not get destroyed. Then we also made the ground a couple of blocks lower, because the more we dig, the deeper the fake end is gonna be. Now we can get to the interesting part of building the TNT grid. What we need to do is first of all build this area full of the kaboom machines. But then we can't forget to dig down one more block to avoid blowing up the machine itself. This is the first time when we are building something with dispensers and we know that later on we are going to get those back. This is the kind of project I like. I'm not gonna lie, this huge grid looks epic, but we gotta add some extra redstone above it that will be used to activate all the dispensers at once. What makes this redstone so special is that when I activate it, it all activates instantly at the same time. That's because you wouldn't want 600 TNTs all dropping and exploding at different times. And to every single dispenser, we are going to add two stacks of TNT. This should be enough to dig as far as the TNT drops. To our surprise, we didn't even end up using all the 100,000 TNT. Only about 78,000 got used. 
After that, we dug out one more block from the ground level to finally have the TNT grid ready and armed. Saying that I'm excited for the next part would be an understatement. Let's start the machine and see it blow up the world. Look at this thing go! This is the fastest world destruction I have ever seen! Obviously if you see any water or lava it has to be stopped. It's laggy right now but it's looking good. It didn't take long for the first lava to appear. Once we get it removed we can start it back up. It is so satisfying seeing all the 600 TNTs dropping at once. And while it's doing its thing in the background, I wanna answer one question. How do we play together? Well, it's easy. We sit like 2 meters apart in this super dope office and have a server. But actually, you and your friend could be sitting anywhere in the world when you host a server from Wise Hosting, our own hosting company built by gamers. We offer high quality Minecraft servers and even when you are a complete beginner, we have an amazing support that helps you out with almost anything. Check out the link below to host the server using Wise Hosting and use code END to get 25% off from the first order. Thanks Wise Hosting for being a sponsor when Raid Shadow Legends isn't around. But let's get back to mining. Only 10 minutes later and we have this massive hole with an almost perfectly flat floor. But as you can see, the destruction job isn't perfect, so we'll need to remove all the rest of the blocks manually here. And that's the circle clean of all the floating blocks. I can see the water didn't protect our walls perfectly as it's full of holes. But that's fine since all of it's going to be covered up anyway. Now let's get rid of the TNT grid. Look at what we have here. Oh boy, that is a lot of black concrete powder. And this is also the last time we can see this hole, because this black concrete we are going to use is going to turn this into a bunch of nothing. We are gonna try placing the concrete powder first. This falls down and then we can use water to turn it into regular concrete. This way we can save time by not having to turn the concrete powder into concrete. Once we finish the walls, a random and amazing idea hit us. What if we don't make the bottom floor flat and just cover it the way it is right now? So that is what we started doing. Now our concrete placing is finished and look at how beautiful this thing is. I am so glad we didn't decide to flatten out the bottom, but okay, this is still concrete powder and we'll somehow need to cover this whole thing with water, so we can finally have the complete darkness in here. It literally doesn't seem real. From far away I could say it's just a black circle and nothing else. But then you can see Lowry go into this, which looks so unrealistic. So the outside still looks a bit horrible. I know, it's time to fix this by calling in the Schalker landscaping team. And we are already here, so let's get to work. Now I'm happy with how it looks and our void is ready, but we still have to build an end island on the inside. For this we went to the end and just stole a piece of the end island.
but we didn't stop at just getting the end stone. We then went to get blocks from the nearby end city, which someone had already destroyed. For us, this seems like the easiest way we can get a bunch of purple blocks to build a copy of the end city. Guess who's back? Me, you and a lot of sharker boxes of end stone. And with this trio, we can start building the end island into our hole of darkness. This island we are building is an actual end island. I just scaled it down to about 20% of the real size. It already looks like the real end dimension, but we have planned one more decoration, which will be an exact copy of the end city. Oh yes, the only way you can tell this island is fake, is because it's hollow. The city with the ship is also an exact copy of the real thing, cause we only produce the highest quality fake stuff here. Everything is ready, even the chores fruits are growing. But should we also bring a couple of shulkers to make it even more realistic? But there are two. We are Schalkercraft, so might as well be Schalkers. Well, technically, you also need... Okay, okay, okay. That's realistic. We are definitely Schalkers. And that is our fake void with the end fully complete. You could say that we got to the end of it. I think it looks absolutely mind-blowing. And I never imagined the feeling in here would be just like in the end dimension. If you want to go and explore this small end yourself, then there is a word download below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye!